All right, so I want to talk about a decision that you have to make when you're designing an electrical system. How do you want to represent your equipment and the circuiting that goes to and from your gear? You've probably seen a single line diagram or a one line diagram, and you know what a panel schedule is, but why would you use one over the other? And what are like the criteria to decide whether you use a single line or a panel schedule? So it all comes down to the amount of detail that you want to show in your design. Do you want to just show the branch circuit to the equipment and that's it? Or do you need to call out the different wire types, the disconnect and the VFDs all the way down to your air handler? So if we want to take a look at the single line diagram, you can see that the type of loads that I'm, um, that I'm circuiting here aren't just single receptacles or lights. Instead, these are mechanical or process equipment that have multiple components that we need to show. So over here, we have a VFD uh, to a hot water heating pump. And then the next one over, there's a disconnect switch, a fused one at that, that provides power and protection to the compressed, uh, the air compressor down the line. So you can see that we can specify exactly what type of cable goes on each side of the VFD. So right here, it's a 40 amp cable, and this is just 600 volt conductors. Then after the VFD, we want to specify a VFD type cable. So that information can be easily illustrate it on a single line diagram. If you wanted to do that on a panel schedule, it would be a lot more difficult. Some other things that you can do on a single line that's difficult to illustrate on a panel schedule is like if you wanted to have say two main breakers and you want to key interlock them, or if you wanted to show a breaker that has shunt trip, or if you're doing a switch gear with like LSIG breakers, like anything that you want to add extra information to is a little easier to do on a single line diagram. So you kind of get the idea. A single line diagram maybe involves a little more work to put together, but you can actually um, put a lot more information in that diagram. A panel schedule, on the other hand, is a little more simplified. It gives you information about the panel itself and literally just numbers the loads and sometimes provides you the load value in a chart. So if you want to look at the panel schedule, you can see that it's a very chart-like organized list. So up at the top, we'll have usually a panel name with a location, and then there's some options that can be specified for the panel. So for example, here, um, something unusual would be a SPD or surge protection device. So you can say exactly what it is, type two, 90 KA, et cetera. Um, if you need a double neutral or anything, this is a good spot to put it. It'll list your enclosure type, whether it be type one, so for indoors, or you want to do outside for a NEMA 3R, you can list that here as well. Then you can find some other common information such as voltage, phase, wire, and serve from. Uh, you can include AIC rating, surface mounted or recessed, and um, you can list your bus size or your main circuit breaker. Sometimes this might just be a main lug only. So you can list that kind of information here. But you can see that when you get past the panel information, the load information is a little limited as to what you can include here. So of course you have your loads, li like your lighting loads here, you can put your load in, but um, if you wanted to include any notes, like if you need to include a fuse disconnect and you want to size the fuse or something, you have very limited space to do that. So you, of course you can always put a note one and then elaborate down here, but let's say you have that for five or six different pieces of equipment, each one with its own special sizing, you can see that this becomes unfavorable in that situation. But on the plus side, it is very organized and simple. You will have your circuit number with your load description. You can specify what the amperage of the breaker is and how many pulls. Then this will usually pull in your load. If you're doing it in Revit, this will be an intelligent panel schedule. So anything that you circuit to it will have their loads transferred to this chart. Then from here, you can do a load classification if you wanted to. So in this instance, it's just lighting. So it's just 100%. But um, if you were to classify your loads as uh, uh, receptacle or equipment or HVAC, you can apply a different demand factor. Then once all your demands are added up, you can get a uh, demand load that's you know less than your total connected load. Another useful feature for this one is that we'll have, um, we can check to make sure that our phases are balanced. So A, B, and C should typically all be within like the same amperage pull. So if you have one that's extremely out, which you can kind of see here, phase A is slightly heavily loaded. So since that one is more loaded, you'll have a neutral connected current. So if you were to balance all three of your phases out, the neutral shouldn't experience any current. So that's better for the whole system. So you can kind of see that each one has its pros and cons. 
Single line diagram can be very detailed, especially when you have different loads that require different parts to it. A panel schedule, on the other hand, is very consistent, and it also helps you add up your loads, check your phase balancing, and just give you a good total demand load. Normally on a project, you would use both, but you have to know when to make that cutoff. So if you're looking at a bigger single line diagram and you're working your way down from the distribution, you have to kind of know when you have to switch over to a panel schedule. Most branch circuit panels are always um, shown as a panel schedule and on a single line diagram, it would just be a box. So basically the bottom line is a single line diagram offers you more flexibility and allows you to put more specific details in that design. So when you have something that requires disconnect or VFD or motor starter or just anything that's like out of the ordinary, um, then you might want to go with a single line diagram. But if you go further downstream and you get to a branch panel where everything is just a receptacle load or a lighting load, then a panel schedule is a very convenient and simple way to convey your information. Plus then it adds up your loads and everything. So it's nice to have if you're trying to do a load cap later. All right, so that's my short rationale on why I would use a single line diagram or a panel schedule. So uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. We can have a chat down there. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.